At the end of last week's class, I mentioned that today we would begin discussing an experimental community that was established in the United States during the mid 19th century and how that experiment was related to larger trends in 19th and 20th century history. Let me first describe that community and then afterwards I would like to hear your thoughts on it. In 1841, a group of about 20 people moved to a place called Brook Farm, not far from Boston, Massachusetts, and they started living together there. They formed what they called a voluntary association and they wrote a constitution setting out the rules for how the association would operate. The association was owned and managed by the members themselves. The members worked for the association, but the constitution gave each member the right to select and perform whatever kind of work he or she felt most suited for. All of the adult members were paid the same amount for their work. It didn't matter how old they were, whether they were men or women, or even what type of work they did. Their workday was limited to at most 10 hours too. The members paid rent to the association for their living areas and they were also billed for their food, fuel and clothing. But they received free of charge their education and medical care and the use of the public rooms and baths. Children, sick people and the elderly, meanwhile, didn't have to pay for anything. The farmers produced most of their food themselves and made many of the other things they needed. But they did not cut themselves off from the outside economy. After all, they needed money to pay their members for their work. To raise that money, the association sold milk and other products to people in the nearby towns. Brook Farm was thus an experiment in a certain type of cooperative living. The members took their meals together and spent most of their free time together. But they also continued to own private property and were free to leave the group at any time. People did in fact leave from time to time, though for the first few years there were more who wanted to join and the membership gradually grew. You may be wondering what the purpose of this experiment was. The founders of Brook Farm were mostly well-educated city people. Why did they want to live and work together on a farm? Well, they were unhappy with the direction that society seemed to be moving at the time. They didn't like the fact that people were not treated equally. They hated slavery, which still existed then in the southern United States, and they opposed the oppression of women and the poor. They also didn't like the competitive aspects of business and trade, and they believed that life would be more rewarding in the country than in a crowded city. They therefore decided to create their own ideal community, one where everyone would be treated equally, one where no one would be taken advantage of, one where the weak would be protected and the healthy would be able to engage in work they enjoyed. That's the kind of community they tried to create at Brook Farm. That's only the beginning of the story, but let me stop there. After we take a break, I want to hear what you think. Question 1. What does the lecturer mention about Brook Farm? Question 2. What did the members have to pay the association for? Question 3. How did the association earn money? Question 4. In what way was the community at Brook Farm cooperative? Question 5. 
Question 5. What did the people who started Brook Farm most want?